Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. I ask you to stand as you are able and we'll sing number 224. We have come into his house. The 224. The two verses. Welcome to each and every one of you. It's a pleasure to see you, and uh, we trust that as we serve in our Lord and Savior through this service, that each and every one of you will be blessed. I'm very thankful and congratulate all of you that have moved further up. It is uh, very good to see, and uh, it uh, will certainly look a lot better on our video, even though Dan says we're getting a new camera that'll go out a little wider, but it. Uh, uh, I, certainly appreciate having people closer to me instead of way back there. In the way of announcements, there's a few things I'd like to uh, announce. Number one is that right after the service, the Ladies Auxiliary are going to meet up here. It's going to be a very short meeting. And uh, after that, there is going to be an outreach and mission meeting, which will be downstairs. So if you're on either one of those two committees, please take note accordingly. In the bulletin is the visitation for Joel, um, if you'll take note of that. Nancy, do you still need a volunteer for the sixth? No, you have a volunteer? Okay. Um, and on the seventh, for those of you who like to have Dutch food, on the seventh is a stumpot dinner at the Christian Reformed Church. Um, at least that's the way I read it in here. It's, it's for the fundraiser for... Uh, and that goes from 5.30 to 7 at the Christian Reformed Church in Owen Sound. Um, next Sunday, you don't have to have lunch. Come here and have lunch. And it's uh, a fundraiser, so it's a free will offering for lunch. And uh, that'll be next Sunday. And last but not least, we are into the month of February. And the February newsletter is out. You can find it online, but you can also find it in your mailbox downstairs. So I encourage you to go to your mailbox and get your newsletters. That's all the announcements that I have. Anything I missed? Nope? Okay. This time I would like to lead you in the prayer of invocation, and partway through we will stop as usual and have a few minutes of silent personal prayer. Shall we pray? Father God, we have come into this your house to worship and praise you through this service to praise you for calling us out of the darkness into your wonderful light. This morning we come with happy hearts, with sad hearts, with joys and sorrows, 
We thank and praise you for listening to our prayers, which we will now lay before your throne of grace individually and silently. Worship him, Christ our Lord. Yes, indeed, worship him. What a sense of peace we receive here in your house. Calm our minds and restless souls to receive the full blessing of this service. May our hearts be filled with joy as we sing joyfully, joyfully we adore thee. As the music leads us, down, leads us sunward in a triumph song of life. Father, we confess we continue to put ourselves first so often instead of putting you in the number one spot. We don't always think of our neighbors. We don't stop, stop and ponder the legacy we are leaving as we've heard in the last few Sunday messages. Bless Pastor Shannon as she opens your word and brings today's message, the ultimate plague. Help us to, t help us to turn the darkness into light and respond in such a way that folks will see that you have broken the bonds of darkness and we are walking in your glorious light. We ask a blessing on the songs we sing, on our prayers offered up to you, on our communing with you through the, whole, through the Lord's Supper and from our time of fellowship. Prepare us to be fully engaged in his service so we will bring glory to you. So we will humbly but joyfully praise you for our salvation freely given through the blood of the cross. And we pray this in our dear Savior Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to stand and sing that song as you are able, joyful, joyful, we adore thee, adore thee number 90.
Please be seated. The responsive reading is on the back of your bulletins and also on the overhead. And I will lead you in the responsive reading at this time. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, darkness, but will have the light of life. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Amen. I will ask the ushers to take up your offering at this time. Shall we pray? Father, yes, we do thank you for sending your spirit to live with us. We thank you for everything that you continue to do for us. And Father, we thank you for the offering that has been taken up. We ask, Lord, as we continue to work in your kingdom here in this church, that you will continue to support us in so many ways. Continue to bless each and every member here and all of those who visit. And Lord, as we continue to serve you, may we truly be joyful, joyful, and more joyful for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children's hymn. Sorry, I'm looking for children. We're all here? Okay. Children's hymn, number 293. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. Stand as you are able.
I don't remember ever singing that song before, but the words are absolutely wonderful. Well, it says the scripture reading is supposed to be next. Is that what we want to have done, Shannon? Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll do the pastoral prayer then. Sorry. Never said I could read. Okay. Who has things of joy this week? We're very happy that Gratis and Annika are back. You had your hand up, Gratis? Anyone else? Jim and then Emily. Well, I praise the Lord for the spirit you gave. We have in men's Bible study. Emily. Uh, I'm just going to say. Sorry? Uh, at, for weather permitting, at least at Longman, my brother goes to Longman again for another check over. Two days this time. Okay. Mary Wynn. Grace for the snow shovelers. Sorry? Grace for the snow shovelers. Snow shovelers. Hmm. I wonder which two girls that is. <laughs> Anyone else have a praise or a prayer request? If not, let us go to our Lord. Father, we just sang. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory. Praise the one who's made us one. Thank you for the unity we have as a church family. For the bond of love we share as redeemed members of your household of faith. And it is all through your love and grace. This morning we come thanking you for this country we live in and the freedom we have to worship you. Be with all those who bring your message of love and salvation, whether in this country, around the world, or on the mission fields. Bless the missionaries that this church supports. We pray for our prime minister, our premier, our local mayor, and for all who are in government. Work in the hearts of all world leaders, turning their minds to the well-being of everyone and not themselves. We ask for a blessing the leadership of this church. Inspire them to show by actions and encouragement the love that we have for you. And we pray for all of us to become more servant-like as we look to the ultimate example shown us, our loving Savior, Jesus. Father, we thank and praise you for being attentive to and answering our prayers, for giving us the assurance of eternal glory with you, and for keeping us safe on the roads. We thank you for the clear, good report that Catherine received from the doctors that her cancer is gone at this point, and we ask that it stay gone. Father, we thank you that Greatest Anani could, could return to us. Lord, we also thank you for the spirit in the men's Bible study, how we attempt to look into your word and from it continue to grow in our faith. And yes, Lord, we do pray you for people that and pray for people that do shovel snow, for people that look after their neighbors, neighbors and help each other. This morning we ask for a special measure of peace for Neil and Rosemary and their family with the passing of Joel. Father, lay your hand of comfort on them and on all who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are in retirement and nursing homes, in the hospital or at home not well enough to worship with us here. We have many needs, many requests for healing and strength. Be with Harvey, strengthen his body so he can join Alice in Kelso Villa. Lay your hand on Shirley, on Robert, on Zachary, on Logan, on Norman. And Father, I'm sure we have missed some or that we're not aware of who need your love and grace and also your healing hand be with them as well we pray father we pray for our families 
our children, grand and great grandkids. We ask that you work in their hearts so that they seek to put you first in their lives. We ask a special blessing on this service and the message being delivered. So it is to the upbuilding of our faith as we use as we use you as you use us, may we be your of use to you as we bring glory, honor, praise, and adoration to your most holy name. Amen. Now can we have Well, good morning, everyone. I know this morning I didn't have a chance to say hello to everyone personally, but uh, so glad you're here, and uh, I hope this service is a blessing to you. From the 10th chapter of Exodus, verses 21 to 29, we read of the plague of darkness. Hear the word of God. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days, yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and herds behind. But Moses said, you must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship the Lord. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, Get out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come into your presence humbled by the example of mercy that we have just read from the book of Exodus. It reminds us of the compassion that we know at your hand. As we search your scriptures, Lord God, we ask that you would not harden our hearts. We ask that instead you would awaken your spirit within us. Speak to us. Teach us the lessons you would have us know that we would be instruments of your light in the life of others. With faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Ultimate. Ultimate means a final or fundamental fact or principle. To be ultimate is to be the final, the best achievable or imaginable of its kind. Some people seek to fulfill what they consider their ultimate experience. They do such things as travel to Quinto, Ecuador to see what it feels like 
to lose, to be two pounds lighter, just because they're at zero degree mark at the equator. The ultimate thrill for others is to stand atop a rock like that, <laughs> wedged between two mountains in Norway. For others, the ultimate dream would be to swim amongst the coral. And uh, Roberta and uh, Doug, I think, have had the um, awesome uh, experience of doing that. Perhaps uh, to you, dining underwater looks interesting. Um, I would much prefer those two options over swimming with alligators or sharks suspended in what is called the cage of death. <laughs> or for those who consider reaching the greatest heights as the ultimate feat, what about wing walking on the top of a plane or forking out $250,000 to fly into space? And I'm almost um, afraid to mention things like this because uh, Doug back there would uh, take that on as a, a challenge. But uh, uh, we want to keep you safe, Doug. Um, anyway, so I, I don't know if uh, any of those experiences appeal to any of you. If they inspire fear and trepidation, I kind of want you to hang on to that feeling as we go deeper into this text from Exodus. For when the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt, and Moses did as our almighty creator told him to, total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. Um, I know yesterday Nancy and I were talking about doing PowerPoints and um, the difficulty of them. Uh, this is an example of an easy PowerPoint slide production. <laughs> Total darkness covered all of Egypt for three days. Darkness that was so deep it saturated the land. It was a darkness that none of the sun deities that the Egyptians worshipped could pierce. It swallowed up every glimmer of light and reflection so that no one could see anyone else or move about for three days. On Thursday, as we know, all the roads in Graham Bruce County were considered closed by the authorities because of lack of visibility, because of the snow blowing around. And I know lack of visibility has caused me to end up sideways in a ditch once or twice, but there was still light. When there is no visibility because of snow, it's all white and it blots out everything on the other side of the windshield. But there is still light. What happened to the Egyptians was a plague of darkness. They were enveloped by it. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. The routine of life and work ground to a halt. The economy was stopped dead in its tracks. This plague of darkness is the ninth plague of ten that God imposes on the Egyptian monarch and his people because the Pharaoh would not release the Israelites from slavery. God plagues the land with blood for water, with frogs and gnats and flies, dead livestock, boils and hail and locusts 
And still Pharaoh denied the Lord's command to let the Israelites go so that they could worship him. Again and again, Pharaoh rebelled against God. This ninth plague of darkness, this second to the last plague that God would visit upon the Egyptians, scholars call the penultimate plague. The penultimate plague. And I must admit, when I read that word, I had to look it up. <laughs> I did not know meant. And I don't know if you're like me, but I thought that it meant the ultra ultimate, the super ultimate. But what it means is the second to last. Not the ultimate, the final, the best achievable or imaginable of its kind. It's the second to last plague. And that may be true chronologically, for of the ten plagues that God subjected the Egyptians to, the plague of darkness was the ninth one. It was the second to last one. But I contend that this plague of darkness is the ultimate plague. And the plague of darkness is not just something we only read about in the Old Testament book of Exodus. Darkness continues to plague us. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Darkness is hating a brother or sister. Darkness is equated to sin in our lives. And where there is darkness in our eyes, when the windows to our hearts are black, when we seek to do or be or desire that which is not driven by faith, we need light to dispel that darkness within us. We need to escape the fear of cowering in the darkness, of giving in, of giving up, or of trying to do things without the Lamb of God. Without the lamp of God, that light of Christ that guides us. As Bob cited in our responsive reading this morning, you, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. This is the verdict. The Bible says light has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Jesus spelled it out for us. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we all walk through darkness. We all have times of darkness. But whoever follows Christ will never remain in that darkness. We will have light of life. When we do not repent of the ways we have dishonored God, when we rebel against him, when we deny that Jesus died to save our souls, when we argue against the power of God that raised him from the dead, we are in darkness. We are plagued because there is no truth in us. Scriptures ask, who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Those are strong words. You might even say those are fighting words. And many have fought and died over those words. And yes, they are fighting words because 
That's what Satan is called. He is called the father of lies because he refuses to worship God. The deceiver refuses to humble himself before the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. He refuses to abide by the greatest of God's commands to love God with all our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. I hope you don't identify with those refusals. Can you see how devastating it is if you and I refuse to worship God, if we refuse to humble ourselves before the Lord God Almighty, our creator and preserver, we are destined for the ultimate plague, the plague of darkness. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Whoever does not recognize Jesus as the light of the world is thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus warns us that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So let us hear with new ears and open hearts that when Jesus himself said, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness, let us come before him repentingly, asking for forgiveness from the sinless Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He has come to lift that mantle of shame and guilt and fear and worry and trepidation off of our shoulders. He has come to be our light, knowing what it is to endure darkness. The darkness that Christ endured on our behalf when he died upon the cross for us plagued him. Mark records that that day at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. It says the darkness lasted until Jesus died, then the darkness lifted and the light appeared. Jesus is that light. Seek that light. Submerse yourselves in that light. Did you notice that even though God worked through Moses to engulf all of Egypt with total darkness for three days, so completely that no one could see anyone else or even move about. Notice what it says about those faithful to the Lord, those who believed in the promises of God. While the whole of Egypt was plagued with darkness, all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. And today's study stops, really, at that verse, because that is this morning's key verse. All the Israelites, all of God's people, had light in the places where they lived. It joins Old to New Testament. Those of faith had light. They were the light. And I know that's maybe not the most effective picture, but can you imagine that they were like pinpoints of light to the rest of Egypt that was thrown into darkness? 
And so it is with us. If you and I proclaim Jesus as Lord and believe in our hearts that Christ died, was raised from the dead for us, you and I will be saved. We become lights. We are pinpoints of light like the Israelites were in Egypt's darkness. Jesus calls his faithful the light of the world. We become children of light. We cannot help but be lights. We cannot hide it. We're not trying to be lights or trying to have light. We are lights. We are lights illuminating Christ through who we are and what we do for others. For a new light has dawned, and that light is Jesus, the risen Son of God. I urge you to flee the ultimate plague, the plague of darkness, which is life without faith in Christ, which leads to that place of darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Instead, seek Christ, repent, and believe in him. Do not be plagued with darkness. Live as a child of light through faith in our risen Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we rest in the knowledge that you are in control. We see your invisible qualities in the amazing places on earth in its creatures, and in the love we share one with another. Lord, forgive us when, we, when our choices and our actions dull and dim our witness as children of your light. Empower us to flee the darkness of doubt and fear. Instead, help us to be the beams of light that you call each one of us to be. Through Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. As we prepare to approach the communion table, we will sing together the first three verses of hymn 413, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Please stand as you're able.
Psalm 33, verse 12 tells us, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, for all nations are mortal. Heavenly Father, we claim you as our God, as this morning we remember the sacrifice of Jesus in redeeming the nations of the world as the light of the world. I invite you to come to the Lord's table, all of you who love him. Come to the Lord's table and confess your sin. Come to the Lord's table and be at peace. Let us pray. Most holy God, we come before you confessing that we have not believed you or trusted in your power as we should have. We have doubted and denied you. Lord, help our unbelief. We have sinned and disobeyed you, Father, by our action and inaction. Cleanse us, Lord. We are broken by disease, bruised by the sins of others, weakened and unable to repair ourselves. Heal us, merciful Lord. We ignore your call to center our lives in you and so are deaf to the hopes and cries of the poor, the sick, the needy, and the earth. Ground us in you, Father. Lord, we praise you for the promise of forgiveness that we find in your word that says, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Father, we cling to this verse this morning as we confess our sins to you. Forgive us, we pray, through Jesus, our risen Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is right to praise you, Lord. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Holy Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is praised among all peoples. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, who forever sing to the glory of your name, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy. You are the Almighty One. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Spirit, you created all things, blessed them, and called them good. You called to yourself a people to make your mercy and truth known in all the world. We betrayed your calling, yet you were faithful. We wandered from the way, yet you called us to return and led us home. And still we turned from your ways and made ourselves slaves to sin and death. At the right time, you came and dwelt among us as one of us, bringing good news to the poor, healing the sick, raising the dead, sharing a table with the unrighteousness, and teaching the ways that lead to life. By your incarnation, life, suffering, execution, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, and made a new covenant with us by water and by the Spirit. On the night of your betrayal, betrayal, Lord Jesus, you took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks for the bread. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this bread that rem reminds us of your body broken for us. We thank you for your sacrifice. We pray that you will help us to be your people every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us, and let us be thankful. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out in the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's coming again. Let us also give thanks for the cup. Lord, we come again to you this morning on your table to give thanks for your ultimate sacrifice you did for us. Not because we are so good, but because we need your help to forgive our sins. Let we remember when you give your blood to sacrifice for our sins over and over. Let we not forget in eternity. And be with us wherever we go. Let me be a little light in this world of darkness. We ask you that in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Jesus says, this is the blood of the covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us remember and be thankful.
Christ has come among us. Christ has died. Christ has risen again. Christ abides with us. Christ will come again. Let us sing the last two verses of Break Thou the Bread of Life. Please stand as you are able. Go from this time of worship out into the world. Go from this place to live God's will, to pray and to serve, to be awestruck by God's mighty acts, to share love, to feed the hungry and care for the sick, to act as peacemakers, and to fill the world with hope in Christ. Amen.